Coming up on this episode of Conversations from the Cave. On this episode of Conversations from the Cave, we'll be talking about five reasons to start a business. Married or single, father or fatherless, doesn't matter. We're calling you to the man cave right right now. now. Conversations from the Cave is a raw self-help podcast dedicated to discussing men's issues from pornography to parenting, from religion to real life, from learning to loving. We discuss the real issues that affect real men every day. Join us each week for powerful, revealing conversations from the Cave. Now, your host, Kirk Kennedy. Welcome to Conversations from the Cave. I'm your host, Kirk Kennedy, hanging out with my partner in crime, Mustang. How you doing, man? Hey, it's it's Mustang, as always. I got another energy drink, so I am ready. (laughs) Man, I tell you, we have had uh, some pretty crazy shows over the last few weeks, and it's good to be back in the studio to talk about something different to talk about something both you and I have a passion for, and it's something that I think uh, we'd really like to see if we can get guys uh, kind of thinking about this. So what's our topic oh, yeah. for today, man? What's our topic? So five reasons to start a business. Absolutely. So five, we call them five good reasons to start a business, and there are a lot of things that we can do in life, but I think a man's profession is by far one of the things that defines him. It isn't the only thing, obviously. Character makes a difference and, uh, you know, acts of service and so on and so forth. There's a lot of things that define a man, but career is a big part of a man's identity. So starting a business is part of your identity in a way, I guess. Uh, Would you say, Mustang? Oh, yeah, definitely. I I feel like um, I think uh, nowadays we are taught and taught. It is drilled into us. Starting a business is the difficult route. Starting a business is for successful people only. It's for this esoteric, you know, the, the elite, this certain section of people. They start businesses. Everybody else go work nine to five. That's what you do. Get a job from somebody else who's more successful than you. Um, and I believe that that's a myth. I, I, I don't believe it. I know it's a myth. It's a myth to do that. Um, you know, obviously back in the olden days, we would be bartering and trading things. Hey, I need this done. You need that done. Uh, let's trade services that we, uh, let's trade crafts or services. I'm a, I'm a, um, uh, I do woodworking, you know, I do carpentry. I'll trade some of my chairs and a table for some of the fruits that you, you know, you do uh, herbology or whatever you're doing. And, you know, you can give me some of your fruits or some of your herbs or whatever it is. So, um, but yeah, five reasons to start a business. So, uh, number one reason that I would say to start a business, uh, that I personally found that was absolutely liberating pun intended is the (laughs) freedom that you get from starting a business. Literally the freedom uh, one of the fondest memories I have is when I first started a business, uh, I, I came home, uh, I, oh, excuse me, I wasn't, I wasn't working anymore, uh, at a, you know, at a nine, nine to, five to five place. I was yeah, home working. Yeah. And I, I was like, you know what? I, I want to take my laptop outside on the back porch and I want to do my work out there. And I did. And I was sitting there just looking at the, the trees in my backyard and listening to the chirping and I was like, and it, you know, maybe like 10 o'clock in the, in the morning or, 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 or 11 o'clock. And I'm like, all of my other friends and my ex coworkers, they're all still at work right now. And I'm <laughs> at home just sitting on the back porch doing my work wherever I want. Nobody's telling me to, to, you know, when to go to the bathroom or anybody's telling me to get this done by this time and this, that, and the other. Now we'll talk about this later. That's a double-edged sword. <laughs> nobody's telling you right. to do it. But, right. but other than, but the, the beauty of that is you've got the freedom. Did you experience that as well? Yeah, I think there's I think there's a certain amount of um, freedom that comes with the idea of you're charting your own courts, too. So it's it's not just your work hours. You may end up working more hours, but you, you're charting oh, yeah. your own course. And I think that's one of the things that is the liberating experience or the liberating feeling. It's like, well, you know, I I could have I could have been 
in this particular direction. I could have chosen to do a nine to five, but if I make this transition to a business where I'm actually doing it myself, I, I'm charting the course of it. And the long-term direction of it ultimately and hopefully will be to my benefit because it's something that I'm working on partially for me and then the people who I serve. So yeah, I think it, there is a certain amount of liberation that comes with, with uh, a, new, a new business. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and like I said, just just feeling that, you know, um, you know, you're in an office, let's say you're in an office right now, or let's say you're working at Walmart, you have to stay in that little line, you know, where you're checking people out right. for however long they tell you to. But what what if you're like, you know what, I think I would do better. Let's say that you love ringing up things. That's actually what you love to do. But you say, you know what, I've been here for five hours, it would be better if I did this for two hours, then I went and took a jog, or I went and took a walk, or I went and just enjoy the sunshine. And then I came back to it, and I'd be refreshed, and I'd be happier, and I'd be, you know, more more invigorated and ready to do this again for another two hours. And I took another little little break and listened to something, or read a book, or, or, or watched a TV show for an hour, and then I came back, you know? Whatever the case is, those are the things that I get to do where I can say, you know what, I'm still going to work, but I'm going to take my work outside or I'm still going to work, but I'm going to take my room. I'm going to take my work in the bedroom and I'm going to sit there with some tea or a cup of coffee, you know, or, or whatever the case is, uh, you know, or a glass of wine if, if you drink wine. So, you know, that those are that is some of the freedom that you have with 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 working for yourself. Absolutely. Um, number two, we ready for number two? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Right after the break, we're going to talk about. The second reason why you should start a business. You're listening to the Conversations from the Cave Show with host Kirk Kennedy and the CFTC crew. You can search for the CFTC podcast on Alexa and Siri. CFTC is also available for download on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, TuneIn, Tumblr, Podcast Republic, and Google Play Music. Want your church or men's group to host the next CFTC Live Man Up Conference? Contact the crew on ProboxMediaGroup.com forward slash man up. Now, back to the Man Cave with Kirk Kennedy and the CFTC crew. Yeah, we're back. Uh, Kirk Kennedy and hanging out with Mustang. We are talking about five reasons to start a business. The first one, of course, was freedom. The freedom to do what you want to do, how you want to do it and making your own schedule, charting your own course. Now we're going to talk about uh, number two. Mustang, what do we got for item number two? Number two, I actually want to, I actually want to talk about this. And, and this is really important to me. And I've actually spoken in front of, in front of uh, hundreds of people about this exact thing, is every business that you currently support, just take a look around you. Uh, at some point or take a look on the internet and look at all these big name businesses that you see every single one started in someone's head one one human not a hundred not two in one person's head as a thought and then they may have shared that thought with other people and that thought grew Uh, but every single business that you currently support you currently go to that you work for it started with one single person that had an idea and it did not exist yet at that time it did not exist so uh two three years ago three years ago chris mccann the voice actor did not exist uh you know um uh, three four years ago conversations from the cave did not exist uh right you know um so every business had a small beginning. Every single one had a small beginning. Mm-hmm. So literally, right. all we have to do is drag, and all we have to do is is that's a that's a <laughs> mouthful, really, but you drag <laughs> that dream that you have. Yeah, <laughs> you have to drag it, and it's kick is kicking and screaming into reality. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but that being said, every business that you can ever dream of, the big ones, the small ones, they all started in one person's head. They had very humble beginnings. Yeah, you, you can look at some of the big ones. Um, let's just take Apple, for example, with Steve Jobs and and others in their garages, uh, specking out different uh, computers, utilizing the chips that they had and the mechanical processes that they had. And, and look at what it's now doing. It's one of the largest, gr- biggest grossing companies, and it started a few years ago in someone's garage. So 
the the humble beginnings that you talked about, Mustang, are are absolutely uh, positively where everybody has to start. And I think the the challenge is that because we define ourselves in many ways by what we do, if it isn't big to begin with, it suggests mm-hmm. it, many people say, well, you know, I'd rather have a big, high paying job that I'm working at, you know, Corporation X that I can tell people about as opposed to I'm working in my garage and I'm starting something, you know, from from scratch. Oh, yeah. And I'm not making I'm not making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars because I'm starting something from scratch, something that's that's a, a kernel that will grow into something, but it isn't that way now. And I think I think you have to have the discipline the discipline to believe in your dream and the importance of what you're doing so that you can weather that storm, which is I, I don't have to be, I don't have to have a great deal of income to begin this process, but I have to start somewhere. And I think Mm -hmm. the, you know, you think about conversations from the cave. Uh, It started at a cookout with a bunch of guys talking about how difficult it was to raise kids and deal with the challenges associated with being a, a hardworking man, sometimes away from your family, and then sometimes having to go home and carry the load after a, a long day's work. I mean, we all had issues. You know, we were all talking about how difficult this was. And, and I remember personally, before t- uh, starting CFTC, that my own life when it had some changes there were there were no men's groups that i was aware of talking about the kinds of content and the the types of topics that we we do talk about on this show this show has actually been helpful to me personally and i know that it is helping others we we get get uh correspondence that suggests it is in fact impacting lives so every dream every dream starts with just a seed, a kernel, a thought, and it becomes a real thing. Uh, the studios that that you're doing, um, uh, Mustang, uh, clearly are uh, started. I think you said you started with a, either a phone under a blanket or something like that. Oh was yeah, or a microphone. That or was something exactly like that. right. Yeah, nope, you did right. your first voiceover auditions using a cell phone and a blanket so that the background noise wouldn't be. Uh, too high and you started i think in a closet i think you said you just had clothes (laughs) and and now uh you're doing uh, talk about some of the clients that you're doing man i mean you're doing some crazy amazing stuff i mean what you've oh yeah Um, american um, express i know you've done yahoo you've done uh um, star trek audi um, Audi, Audi. yeah uh yeah i recently did the most recent i would say are uh texas pete uh, out in Texas, um, the hot sauce, um, uh, NBA 2K19, WWE 2K19, the trailers for those. Uh, Audi, of course, was one of my bigger clients. Um, and there's, I mean, TikTok, uh, which was formerly Musical.ly, that their ads are everywhere. I didn't even know what they was. The only way I knew what they were is because their ads are all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they actually recently reached out to me and said, hey, Chris, we'd like to use your, um, your ads, uh, you know, again and renew uh, for another a year. And TikTok. here's the amount. I'm like, yes, please. Yeah, yes, please. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's like a little, you know, short video platform. But point in case, um, yeah, this didn't exist three years ago. So, uh, you know, uh, it, it was just began as an idea and it began very humbly underneath the blanket, underneath with a, with a microphone, <laughs> with a with a cell phone. Cell and, uh, phone you know, I yeah. know how all stories begin. But yeah, yeah. underneath the blanket and a cell phone and a, <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a laptop. Hey, it's a guy's show. We can't help it from time to time. But, you know, but yeah, it's, it's you know, every business you, you currently support just had it had a very small beginning. And, and these people didn't know who I was years ago. These people had no idea who who I was. So, um, but now they do. So, uh, please don't, don't, uh, uh, ostracize yourself. Don't let a humble beginning stop you from taking, taking control of your dream and allowing you to move forward in, in pursuing something that you believe will be of value to the people in your life. It's, it's, it's critical to, to, um, to actually do something that you can look at as something that you are creating from scratch and that allows you to not only live longer but you don't work a day in your life and that's i actually wanted to add that as our 
number three. And we will be right back after these messages. The Conversations from the Cave Show is brought to you by the Alabama Cornea Care Center, Northern Alabama's first irregular cornea and sclera lens referral center. Dedicated to the management of complex irregular cornea cases, they provide hope and compassionate care for patients suffering from keratoconus, refractive surgery complications, and degenerative eye diseases. Call 256-937-1213 or visit alabamacorneacare.com for more details. Now, back to the Man Cave with Kirk Kennedy and the CFTC crew. We're back. Uh, I've got my si- my uh, partner in crime, Mustang, hanging by my side. We're talking about oh, yeah. five reasons that you should start a business. And one of them is you'll never work a day in your life. It's absolutely amazing to be able to do something that you're passionate about. And I can personally speak to this, and and uh, Mustang, I know, I know that you are living the dream, man, because this is your, this is your passion. You're doing your passion right now, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Oh yeah, no question. <laughs> it's no <Yeah>. question. <laughs> yeah, it's it's absolutely fun. Yeah, uh, I I I literally will walk into the my actual work work quote unquote, like the thing I get paid for, uh, probably doesn't last more than, uh, 15 minutes, anywhere between 15 minutes and an hour. And, you know, the payoff can be in the five figure range, uh, you know, for, for, for literally 15 minutes to an hour's worth of work. That's amazing. That's pretty awesome. That's a, that's a mind blowing concept. And, uh, Perhaps I should make a, a career switch right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, I mean, but, and, and now mind you, though, I guess that's the now the, the 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 thing about it is, of course, obviously the work that goes into getting those clients. Obviously, you know, to get somebody like Audi, to get somebody like Land of Lakes, they don't know who you are to begin with. They have no idea. There are sure, approximately sure. 7.2 billion people in the world. They have no idea who you are, and they just need one for that spot. So you've really got to work and grind and market and do all these other things. But that being being said, as a result of your work, you you literally never feel when you actually do the thing that you're called to do or the the, the actual uh, part. It, it doesn't even feel like working. It's so fun. You're so liberated, uh, man. I, I did this. I got this client. I can't mm-hmm. believe that. Yeah. You know, by the grace of God, I was able to do this amazing thing that I yeah. never otherwise. Yeah. I could have still been in the office right now. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You can, absolutely, and and I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think for me, when um, when I provide um, service and care to the to the folks that are in you know that do come to my business, um, I think there are three things that I I feel. One is that my my work has meaning. You know, there's there's meaning involved in it. There is a service that I'm providing. It has meaning. Uh, number two is I feel that the people whose lives that I, I get a chance to be a part of for the time that I'm serving them, there's there's a role that I play in their life for that period of time. You, you see what I'm saying? Like there's there's that moment where you're actually a part of someone else's existence and even though it's a small part, I play a very small role in their lives, it is wonderful to be able to hear their inspiring stories and to be able to share some part of their life in, in, a, in, a, in a meaningful way. Um, I think the third thing that I enjoy about being in a small business or in a business that... Um, I get a chance to be a part of when you don't feel like you're working, you, you are working, but when you, when you are doing this task, it, it begins to build you. In other words, you as a person feel better. You're not as drained. Now you might be physically exhausted from doing a lot of activity. I mean, I, I'm walking back and forth uh, through the clinic, uh, all day long and 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 I'm I'm dealing with difficult problems but what I do find is that there is a certain amount of refreshment that comes 
after, even after the day, knowing that I'm, I've, I'm doing what I was called to do. I'm serving in a way that I was uniquely prepared to do. And I think that's what you were talking about. You're walking in your purpose, it doesn't feel as much like work. I mean, you, you, you do feel like it's, it's something that you have to do. And you probably, and you have done it uh, in the past for nothing. I know that when I started oh, doing this, that, yeah, oh, yeah, you're doing it for nothing. I mean, you're, you're uh, pay wise. I'm, I'm saying pay. You're, you're, no, you're not no, necessarily that, getting my, paid. No, no, that was my next point. Oh yeah. 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 And, and, and I think that's the uh, thing. That's the big hurdle that a lot of times when you're starting a new business, there are many days where you're doing the activity without financial remuneration. And I think that's a big leap for some people. And that's why they don't, that's why the bar to enter business, self-employed business, is high because most people aren't willing to make the sacrifices to simply say, you know what, I'm going to do without this or I'm going to do without that while I go down this journey. I will do this even for free because I'm passionate about doing this. But ultimately, you know, you're not going to always be doing it for free. I mean, it starts out that way because people don't know who the heck you are and what you're doing and why you're doing it and if you're even any good at it. But as time goes on, you know, we've just, for example, we've just passed our five-year mark, January 18th. And this was huge because most businesses fold within the first five years of opening. So to mm. hit the five-year mark for our business and to be able to say, you know, I'm glad that there is a place that I can go each day to work and to serve people and to, to, to begin the process of what we would call wealth building, um, that's, that's huge. And, and that's, I guess that kind of leads us into our next one. But before we pass this, do you have any other ideas about never working a day in your life? Can you tell me one of the coolest days you never worked? <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, it's, you know, it's funny because it's actually really simple and you really touched on it when you said, uh, about the the doing it for free is uh, yeah, I had a client yeah. uh, literally uh, this was for TikTok this was not a couple of days you guys will actually see the commercial uh, airing soon uh, nationally it's going to air in the U S and the U K um, so if you see the TikTok commercial that's me uh, but that being said um, they sent me a message and they said hey Chris we'd like to renew what's your price and I gave them a relatively big number let's say it was it was close to five five figures for the number. And they said, Chris, we can't we can't quite touch you there. Is is there any way we can work or you know a little bit less than that? Let's work less than that. And I said, let me tell you something. It was just one guy. I said, I want to tell you something. I said, now, yes, of course, I'd be more than happy to work for less than that. I said, but if you if you tell anybody this, I'm just going to deny it. I'm going to lie straight out. I said, but and say I didn't say it. I said, but let me tell you a secret. I said I would do all of these commercials for free. I would not charge you a dime to do this. I love to do it. I would do it for no charge. Wow. Now, of course, yeah. we already made the contract and I accept, you know, you already said, yes, I want this. And, you know, the money's on the way. But um, but I said, you know, let me know that. Let me let me tell you that, because I love what I do. And if you find that intersection or that crosswalk between yeah. what you love and what you're good at, the money, you will just naturally excel at it because everyone right. else is dragging their feet because they're trying to make a dollar. They got to do it to pay a bill. And you're right. like, man, I do this right. no charge. Right. And I think you have to get to a place, and this is this is one of the admonitions before we go to break. Before you decide to do this, of course, each of us is is sold out on the idea of, of entrepreneurship and being in your own business. I mean, we're sold out on it because we would do it regardless of whether or not we're getting paid for it. And I think you have mm -hmm. to have a passion for your for your whatever your job is going to be so that you do get up with excitement, that you do it and excel, that you do uh, refine your skill set so it continues to, to become more and more and more efficient. It's just, it's just one of those things that I think you have to make up your mind to, to do it in order to be able to see the fruit of it. We'll be right back after these messages. The Conversations from the Cave Show is sponsored by Opti Huntsville, signature looks for men with discriminating taste. Design your signature look with stylists from Opti Huntsville. For more information, call 256-886-7281. Now, 
Back to the Man Cave with Kirk Kennedy and the CFTC crew. We're back for, I guess, number four. Uh, Mustang, you want to tell us uh, what we're looking at? Yeah, definitely. Um, It's a blueprint for your children. If you have any little ones out there, uh, them seeing you do what you love and do it well and succeed at it, they will then say, I can do this. Why instead of instead right. of um instead of going and working for this fast food place, I'll be the fast food place. Right. Instead of working for this right. butcher shop, I'll be the butcher shop. Mm-hmm. Um that's what I try to instill in my in my children now. Oh, they say, I Oh, this. I wanna work as a yeah, I wanna yes, work I and do that. this. I say, Well, why don't you be that? You know, if you want to yeah. work in a library, be the library. You go get the books. You go do this. Right. You you do what Create you Create the bookstore. And, and if, I love if you love them. to read yeah. Yeah, create the don't just yeah, yeah don't just don't just sit in a bookstore maybe you ought to create the bookstore if if you if you want to be um hey look at what we're doing right now if you want to be on the radio instead of simply trying to listen to the radio be on the radio create your own station do what you've got to do whatever it is that you're passionate about get be that and i think a lot of times this will actually a side effect of this is that People who are what they have been created to do are less likely to suffer with low self-esteem because they are living their dream and their level of satisfaction day to day will be higher. Have you ever noticed, and and I I don't, no condescension to anyone who still continues to work a nine to five. I think responsibility, uh, working a nine to five is absolutely great if that's what you've been called to do. Rock it. You know, do be responsible, do what you need to do in order to to put food on the table for your family. But I will tell you that I know that there is a mindset and that's what you touched on now, Mustang, is the mindset of having a person train their children to begin the process of saying, I can be it. I don't have to look like it. I don't have to look prosperous. I am prosperous. I don't have to look like I yes. am making it. I am making it. You know, I don't have to look yes. like I'm a doctor. I can be a doctor. I can I don't have yes. to You know what I'm saying? I don't have to oh, uh, yes. try to profile that I'm standing in front of a bookstore in a big shot. I can own the bookstore and be the big shot. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's Amen. it's important. I love it. Yeah, and I, I like when you talk about this blueprint because what happens is you'll find that people who have a work ethic which is surrounded by simply the acquisition of money that they are less successful. So the own if the mm. if, if money itself is what's driving you, it will not be enough. Money itself is never enough. You will always lack it. It will always be something that you're begging for. It will always be something that you continue to think you're entitled to from somebody else's hand. If you're if you're a money grubber, money will flitter away out of your hand. You'll always be broke. So don't do a business for money alone. Do it because you have a calling. Do it because there's a purpose to it. Do it because it it makes the life of the person in your the lives of the people in your circle better. Make it as something that you can do to enhance the lives of those who are a part of the human race. And I think that if you can get that into your your thinking, then subsequently all other decisions are going to be much easier because you're making them from a point of being authentic. And the sad part is that most men who are working nine to five jobs, if they are not being authentic with themselves, will die sooner. Because they are letting their dreams die. And before we, yes. we, go, we go to, actually, I want to just segue into job safety. Because I just, I just want to get <laughs> oh, yeah. to, because we, we just touched on the fact that if you're working for money, you're working for the safety of that paycheck. You're not working yes. to, to build your dream. You're not building a legacy. You're working for the safety of that paycheck. But the question I want to ask you, Mustang, is it safe? True. Uh, (laughs) I can tell you. So this is right into number five, and that is that safe jobs are not always safe, which is exactly um, I can tell you. I'm going to tally it up at some point. 
but I think I have been let go from safe jobs uh, probably five plus times from jobs that are supposed to be safe. Never, ever making more than I make now. Never, ever, ever from these safe jobs giving me more than I make now. Um, so, um, no, safe jobs are not safe uh, whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, government <laughs> shutdowns, layoffs, oh, changes wow, in wow, wow. buyouts, etc. Wow. So, so let's, I want to pause. I want to, there is some meat right there. So there has been, it's been said, and I know that this was a very popular adage way back in the day, which was get your education, go work for a, a good, strong company, and then you'll be able to raise your children with the stability of knowing that you have a good paying job at a, at a strong company that is going to be, you know, around for a good long time. Now, back in the, I'm not going to tell, <laughs> say, say how long ago this was, I, my, my own father, um, I had told him my belief, and this is the belief that, that I had gained from my mom, who was very much into academics and was very, had gone very far in the educational process and worked in, for the Board of Education. And I knew that she had been successful in this route. But, but what was funny was my dad said something to me, and he said, um, let me ask you something. How safe is your job, really? And I said, what do you mean? He says, well, if you've ever spoken to someone who's in a company, in a large company, and you'll hear them talk about their job in, the, in terms of we, they'll use the pronoun we. We've got 20 million in assets. We've got 20 million in, you know, I, I have a friend who, mm. who made this comment. We've got 20 million in assets. Even if there's a downturn in the economy, we're good. Right. So he made this statement. And I said to my friend, who's we? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, you don't have 20 million in your in your bank account. You mean the owners of that business have 20 million in their bank account. They're OK. They can choose to let go Thank of you. everyone in that company with the exception of themselves till they're down to just them. You understand they can yep. let go of everything until they are just the two people who started it. It was a partnership that he worked for. The, the two partners could get rid of everybody and still have $20 million in assets and divide it between themselves and never have to work again. However, their staff, not so lucky. So my point is that job safety is a relative term. And you mentioned specifically government shutdown. So the state of Alabama, which we reside in, happens to have a huge set of government contracts. In northern Alabama in particular, we happen to have a lot of government-based, uh, para-government-supplied military contracts, and um, some of the uh, federal bureaus are here. They have branches here. And it, it, it happens to be a fairly tech-intensive part of the con country. There are more engineers here per capita than any other place on the planet so there are some bright folks here now when the government shutdown that just ended in january um occurred we then see we then see that many of those individuals who support those businesses didn't have jobs they were on layoff they had to get mm -hmm. short-term loans. They had to deal are we, with... Are we talking about the safe jobs? Are absolutely. Safe absolutely. Absolutely. The safe jobs resulted in folks having to get short-term payday loans, having to get to deal with the, the uh, cash flow issues that resulted from the government shutdown. So even the things that we're calling safe, are they really, in fact, safe? Or is this just a delusion that we've chosen to believe that really isn't it, it really isn't there are governments government programs that are shut down all the time so is that safe what if your pet project is the one cut you know exactly and and what you begin to learn as you begin doing business for yourself uh, and this could almost be this could almost be a bonus uh, here is you begin discovering things about yourself that just talents and abilities about yourself you didn't even know you had. So you begin saying, I, if I made this thing and it lasted for three or four or five years, I could do this thing over here as well. And this could make me money in the background. 
uh, and I could do this thing over here. I believe I, I believe a statistic I heard, at least at the time, was um, millionaires have on average approximately seven streams of income. So they might be doing this and they might be doing this and they might be doing that. So as you begin to discover some of these talents and abilities, which uh, I figured out when I was doing voice acting, I had no idea that I have some kind of weird, um, uncanny ability to uh, listen to um, to make to make demos, to make uh, to make radio spots, advertising, just exactly like you would hear on the radio. And a matter of fact, I had done just like a little demo for somebody just for them to hear what I sounded like. And they said, we don't even want to use what we have. We want to use what you have and put that exactly on the radio, just as it is. All the music you added, the sound effects, that's what we want and we'll pay you for it. So, and this is a company who, you know, they did all this stuff themselves. So point in case, you know, you begin to discover these things. And so you branch out and you become your own safety net. You are right. your own safety net. You've got three other businesses. If this one here, if the economy, you know, is hit and this happens over here, you're, you, you've already thought of that because it's you. It's personal to you. You've got personally uh, things invested in it, whether it's your kids, you know, your kids are relying on you. Your your wife is relying on you or just you, you know, your mother or your, your father or somebody you live with is relying on you. Then, um, you, you know, you're going to find yourself. All right. Let me let me let me take these preventative measures on my own. Because like you said, when the company says, well, we've got 20 million in the account, and 20 <laughs> <Right>. billion <laughs> in assets, do you have uh, do you know, you a, have card, a credit card that you can go t tap in and say, hey, hey, you know what? Times are hard. I'm going to need a couple of million real quick. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't. You know, so right. no, it's not we. You still have your $50,000 salary. That's what yeah, you've right. got. So, and you're advocating for this $20 billion company or whatever. So, right, you right. know, uh, that, that's, yeah. Yeah, it's deep. That's a that big you, deal for me. Yeah, and I think I'll, we'll wrap up with this story that Jim Carrey, I think, said, which was um, his dad was funnier than he. He said that his dad mm. was a better comedian than he was. And it was important for him, as he watched his dad, who lost a safe job, they ended up living out of a, a VW camper for a period of time. Because his dad lost a job that he had been giving pretty much all of his life to, which was being uh, an accountant. And he thought it was a very safe job. And he got laid off and the opportunity to get new employment didn't come as quickly. And they were basically homeless. And I think at that time, young Jim Carrey decided to say, if my dad chose not to live his dreams, but chose to go for a safe job, ended up on Skid Row why not go mm. for your dreams and at least you know if you don't reach your dream you have at least died trying and jim carrey of course mm. who has made 20 million or more a movie has clearly demonstrated that not only is money not that important but that living your dreams is what will continue to allow you to be able to have a life of substance this has been Conversations from the Cave, and I've been hanging out with, of course, my partner in crime, Mustang. We are hoping that each time we bring you content, that there will be something that you can take away that will make your life a little bit better. We are trying to make sure that you as men have tools to be able to uh, make your life substantive, make changes in your life, and to continue growing to be the best men you can be and to be the most loving men to the people who are in your life. So until next time, love one another. Conversations from the Cave is brought to you by the Alabama Cornea Care Center, a copywritten production of the Provox Media Group, creators of positive, inspirational media for businesses and nonprofit organizations around the world. For more information, visit the Provox Media Group at ProvoxMediaGroup.com or call 256-886-0405. The views expressed on this program are the personal beliefs of the panelists and do not necessarily represent the beliefs of the Provox Media Group or its sponsors. 